Full time Devils, FA Cup, Arsenal preview. John Shin, do you think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should be throwing absolutely everything at the FA Cup this season? Uh, I personally think he should. I mean, as much as I, uh, as much as my personal preference is that we prioritize the league, I think from an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer standpoint, he'd want to prioritize an FA Cup because he doesn't know if he's going to get the job full time at the end of the season. And at the end of the day, what what remains or what what you're essentially left with is what you've won. Cheeky spot, Dave. Um, winning the FA Cup obviously didn't save Louis van Gaal when he did it. Do you think the same could go for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, where he could win the FA Cup and not continue as Man United manager? Yeah, that could definitely go the same way. Obviously, I think the board's priorities is all about money. It's all about the cash. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the truth of the matter is, uh, getting a top four place is more important to the board than the FA Cup. Mm. Um, I think, um, as John John was um, speaking just now, I think that's a very, very fair point for Oli. Um, he doesn't know whether or not he's going to get the job, regardless of if he if he if he qualifies for the Champions League or whatever. So for him, winning the trophy would be massive anyway. Winning the trophy at Manchester United for his credentials and for his future that would be massive for him and as a personal achievement as well as as manager of Manchester United. So him going for the FA Cup would make a lot of sense. That's a that's a great point there. But in terms of keeping the job, the board are going to be more um, towards qualifying for the Champions League. The money is is far more greater. Um, the prospects for next season are far more greater. You can attract better players for, for playing in the Champions League. Um, nobody on the global scale really cares about the FA Cup, um, that, you know, as we do domestically. That's do you reckon? Do you reckon that's true? Cheers, mate. Oh, shut yeah, up. Bro. Oldest, <laughs> oldest club competition in the world. How many uh, years? How many years, is it? How many years since the Premier League? How many years, mate? What are you, what are you talking about? Listen, it's about trophies, mate. Those <laughs> FA Cups kept Wenger in the job. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of credentials right there. Statman Dave, what would you do? Would you prioritise the uh, the FA Cup or the league? Try and get that top four. As much as uh, you know, it'd be fun to say, "Oh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has won more trophies at Man United than Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool." Whoa! I think it's got to be the league and the Champions League. <laughs> I think they're the two that I'd be pushing for. I think top four is absolutely vitally important. But more importantly for United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, it's the Champions League. I think that's what a lot of United fans want uh, yeah. the most. Obviously, the Premier League record holders there. The Champions League is one of those things that things escaped under the United teams, you know, sometimes unluckily, sometimes coming up against a real opponent. And I think the Champions League is the one. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's got a connection to that trophy. So I just love, I'd love Ole to win it, the FA Cup, to make a point. But at the same time, I think League and the Champions League, it should be the preference. Double helping of cheeky sport today, by the way. We've got Joel here on the preview. If you've not, uh, if you've not been able to tell already, Joel, is an Arsenal fan. Joel, do you think that this game in the FA Cup could actually go on to impact how these teams finish in the league? We are level on points, just goal difference separating us at the minute. Yeah, I think so, but I, it wouldn't be for the same reasons as what you think. I think um, that there's a lot of demand in the league, especially um, there's demand in general. We're in the Europa Cup, which is, I, I find it a little bit more tricky than the Champions League. So believe it or not, um, I think if... Not to say that we don't want to win, but not being in the FA Cup definitely helps us in other areas as well. Of course, we want to win it, but I, I do believe that seeing how it impacted you guys a few years ago being in the Europa, sometimes these other games can kind of like get in the way. So it can definitely impact where we finish, but not in the same way that people think. I don't think it's to spur the team on. I think it's more to do with the games within the season. OK, then. Arsenal United. There's one man who we are obviously going to be talking about, and that is the man who signed for Manchester United a year ago this week, Alexis Sanchez. Cheeky Sport Dave, do you think that Alexis Sanchez could play in this game and could potentially start a turnaround in his United career? I see, I see Joe out there doing, you know, making, making, making piano. So, listen, I, Joe, you didn't, even know, you didn't even know Alexis could play piano. He's <laughs> <laughs> really good now. I bet he's had a whole time to practice. Uh, listen, listen. I think um, I think Oli is the one to get it out of him. To be honest with you, um, he you can tell that he really, 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 really is ready and geared up to to perform. He just needs that um, that opportunity and that continued run of games um, to get it going. I think um, I think I think it will work out because it has to work out. Um, and I think Oli will definitely. Look at Joe smiling in the back there like he got a good deal out of Mkhitaryan, mate. I don't know where Mkhitaryan is. He's in the wilderness somewhere, mate. But, um, <laughs> but, um, I think um, got thrown into the tall grass. I think, um, I think it will work out because it has to work out. And 
the the professional pride of somebody like an Alexis Sanchez wants to. You can see that he's, you know, as as Oli keeps saying, he's chomping at the bit. You can see that he's raring to go, especially in the attacking sense of the way in which Manchester United are playing. Um, you can see that he definitely, definitely, definitely is um, is gearing up and raring to go. And plus, the, the, the times we have seen him, he has. Um, the times we have seen him under Oli, he has um, shown. Uh, signs and sparks of that brilliance, um, especially with that assist to, um, to Marcus Rashford, which is absolutely fantastic. And mm. um, so I think we are, we, we are, we have seen glimpses of it, but we also do know he's not a hundred percent fully fit at the moment. So yeah, he's not hundred percent fully fit for a year, Dave. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> Hey. Let's not forget also the uh, City game at the Etihad last season where he assisted those two Paul Pogba goals. And, and, and he also uh, assisted that Paul Pogba goal to, to knock out um, uh, Tottenham in the FA Cup. There we go. Wembley. There we go. Uh, Statman Dave, um, apart from obviously the massive positive that is that we got to get rid of Mkhitaryan, was there really any point in signing Alexis Sanchez a year ago? Well, I don't think it was a massive positive getting rid of Henrik Mkhitaryan. Yeah, he was a little inconsistent, but he fell out with the previous manager. He's crap. And that's the reason why he left United. It, it wasn't because of his play. It was more that he had an argument and that was it. So under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we could have seen a different Henrik Mkhitaryan, a Henrik Mkhitaryan that was a bit more free, a bit more confident going forward. Mkhitaryan scored some really important goals for Manchester United, especially in that Europa League run. And I think it's one of these things where we look at Mkhitaryan because of the end, but at the start of that season, we were winning games 4-0. We were 4-0 FC because of Henrik Mkhitaryan and his weight of pass in those first, what, four, four games? He got five assists. And I think it was a big mistake. Henrik Mkhitaryan is a supremely talented guy. But if you can get him consistent, he's one of the best players in world. could be one of the best players in world football. The problem was that consistency never came at United. One week he'd be fantastic, next week he'd, be go, he'd go missing. But maybe that was the manager. And that's the frustrating side with Mkhitaryan because there's a talent there. You know, Joel knows that. You know, may, may sort of talk of Henrik Mkhitaryan maybe not being right now, but, you know, one game for Arsenal last season against Everton, three assists in a single oh, that game. Was, that was the that's an was achievement. Actually, that game was like, he's a different player, man. Like, when he plays, but that's the problem. He doesn't play. So, you know. that, that's it. And maybe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could have got that. But I wouldn't say it was a failure for Mkhitaryan. But at the moment for Sanchez, Sanchez needs to start performing for United consistently or he may be another player that could be out the door in the summer. Uh, John, could you see Sanchez turning it round at Manchester United? Uh, he definitely has the qualities and the potential and there is no better chance than to do it under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean... Everything is written on the stone for him to really just kick things off under a manager that's got no pressure on him, that's got no sort of, uh, I guess, real sense of responsibility. Uh, well, of course, there's, let, me, let me rephrase that. He's not, it's not that he doesn't have responsibility, but it's, it's that he doesn't have expectations in many regard, in some sense. And, and for somebody like Alexis Sanchez, who's had so much injury problems, who's had so much form issues, for him to jump into a side right now that's just fully revitalized on all aspects in terms of form, in terms of the mood of the club, in terms of everything on that pitch and off that pitch. Alexis Sanchez, it's written for him to just make things happen again. I think, and of course, of course, it's not a fairy tale story. You know, it's it's nobody nobody thinks that it's going to happen for Alexis Sanchez 100%. But if there's a there's a be, there's no better opportunity than right now, or else I think his chances are going to start slimming down. Joel, our Arsenal fan on the preview today, looking back of it, uh, the past year, you've had Mkhitaryan for a year, we've had Sanchez for a year. Who do you think's had the better deal, mate? Right about now, I think we've both been robbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've both robbed each I think, other. I think, I, think, I, think, I think we both got conned, mate. I, think, I, I don't know, man. That, I don't even know which shirt you would rather wear at the back of your top, man. Honestly, it's, it's been that bad. Like, you can sit here and we can try to take sides because I'm an Arsenal fan and you lot are United fans. But it's been crap. Like, really, we've had better players come out of our youth system than they have, you know, with all that money. Yeah. It's been shocking. Awful, it's, awful, awful. I was going to say, I, was gonna say um, yeah, I think you're spot on there, yeah? The funniest thing is, Alexis Sanchez under Arsenal was better than Mkhitaryan under United. So you, I think you don't have missed, you don't have, you don't have lost in, in essence, not not the score points, but I think you don't have lost more than we have in terms of obviously we haven't gained what you lost, but you don't have lost. <laughs> <laughs> what I say about that is that 
he wasn't good for us at the end. He was throwing gloves on the floor like we had lost Alexis Sanchez he months. He waited out months by then. before. Yeah, months before he left. And to be honest with you, if you don't want to play, leave. You know, you know what it's like, man. You guys don't. You guys at Man United, you guys don't want players who don't want to play for you. That's why when Tevez started kicking up a fuss, you guys were like, "Yep." Out the door you go. Do you know what I mean? Even Paul Pogba, like, not that he didn't want to play, but if you don't want to listen to what the manager saying, the coach is saying, you guys have got away, and I agree with that. Now, because I know you're going to ask me next about Alexis Sanchez, right? Because if, even if you weren't, I'm going to answer you, right? That guy, Dave said, Oli's the guy that can get it out of him. I reckon, yeah, he's right, because if he doesn't, Oli's going to be the guy that gets him out of there. Because <laughs> he's, he's, honestly, yeah, you know, you can give it the whole, oh, yeah, under Oli Gunnar, he's got a great chance. He has to perform because Marcus Rashford, yeah, has got man on their heels at the moment. Marcus Rashford's looking like the best English striker in the whole flipping Premier League at the moment. Yeah. Without like without 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 no argument because what that kid is doing, yeah, he is Man United. He is playing the way you want to play. Not this losing the ball business that Alexis does comes here, starts blaming someone else, and on top of that, he's getting four hundred and something per week. Nah, he he really has a lot of work to do because. You know what I mean? With the amount of money you guys are paying, you guys are definitely losing out at the moment. I'll tell you that for sure. He can't sit there and be the highest paid player and play like that. No way. If he doesn't sort it out, you guys are going to go classic old school and you're going to do what you did to Varon out the window, mate. Go go, go, get, go sell him for Chelsea or something like that. No, it's, it's unacceptable. Isn't it refreshing so my- hearing an Arsenal fan talk sense saying Marcus Rashford is probably the best English player in the Premier League. I love it. And oh, also... Oh, no, yeah, you're t- t- totally right, totally right. Also, going back a little bit before when, uh, <laughs> when Dave was arguing then, that just sums up the problem with Man United and Arsenal at the minute, that we're not arguing about what each other have won, we're arguing about <laughs> who's lost the most. That's literally where we're at. <laughs> right, on the way, we're doing predicted 11s. We're talking uh, about the opposition Arsenal in a bit more depth as well. And, of course, everyone's score predictions. It's all on the way. Right, we're back on to predicted 11. So we do have a predicted 11 league. If you make five appearances throughout the season, we average what score uh, your total is at. And then we give you a final score at the end of the year. So currently in the league of today's preview, as Cheeky Sport Dave is at the top with an average of nine out of 11. Statman Dave is there just behind him, but with 10 more appearances, so it's impressive to have an average of 8.8. John Shin on 7.7 after eight appearances, and uh, uh, Gaz Drinkwater on 7.2 with four appearances. Um, Last week, there was a bit of controversy, actually, about this, because Dave, and I think everyone else in the preview, actually, put Luke Shaw in their team, and then Luke Shaw got taken out of the team literally last minute with an illness. Um, we asked you whether we think that Dave should have got the full house for that or had a point deducted. And you all voted 62% to 38% to give Dave the full house. I personally completely disagree with that. That isn't the starting 11 that started. He should have had the point uh, taken off him. Up, However, Gaz. I will respect uh, you there. the referendum I'll, I'll stop you result. There, Gaz. What team was named? Yeah, but it's Did not the team that started. Team? Yeah, but it's, it's team with eight. That's the game. It's called, start start 11. 11. It's 11, called predicted starting 11. It's exactly it. Right, guys, let's get into it. Cheeky Sport Dave, you're, you're leading, so let's start with you, mate. What's your 11? All right, I'm in, I'm in at the top there. All right, cool. I'm going to start here from, I'm going to start from the top and work my way down because okay. I, have, I have no idea who's going to be in goal right now. Um, I am going uh, with the front three of Martial, Rashford and Lingard. We have um, for an unchanged front three. Um, I think the game is too important to start, you know, haggling and moving around it with with with, this, with a lot of the attacking intent because obviously we saw problems um, when we did that in the last FA Cup game. It wasn't as fluid. Um, middle three, we're going the exact same: Matic, Pogba, and Herrera. Absolutely fantastic. There's some synergy between them three, and it's it's good to see um, that attacking element of Manchester United and that core um, that core element of Manchester United staying very very stable. Um, it's been, I think, I think last game was the first time we named an unchanged side. Named an unchanged side. Obviously, we didn't end up with an unchanged side because Luke Shaw didn't play, but named an unchanged, un- unchanged side, which was absolutely amazing to see some consistency coming yes. out of uh, Manchester United there. Um, the back four, I'm going for, sh- I'm going for Shaw. I'm going for Eric Bailly to come back, and I'm going for Lindelof. And I'm going for 
Dallo. Whatever, Dallo over Young. I've, I've literally just made that decision just now. <laughs> uh, Respect. <laughs> Just, just made a decision just now. Um, and then this is where it gets tough because um, Sergio Romero usually plays in our cup games, but this is a huge game. Mm. And but the issue is if we bring in David De Gea for this game, does that mean David De Gea now has to stay for the rest of the games, no matter who we draw? And I think that's what's going to actually have to happen if that's the case. Um, but I think the game is too... I'm trying to think, what what would I do and what would, what would he do? I think he would put Romero in. Although think- I would have the hearing. So I am going to go with what I... I'm going to go with David the Hair. I'm gonna go, go on, Dave. I- go with your heart no! every no! single time. Go with your heart. Okay. Never mind your head. Uh, and for anyone that, for anyone in the comments shouting things like, ah, oh, Marcus Rashford's injured or Luke Shaw's injured. We record this before Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conferences where he probably reveals a few more details about them. But at the moment, we're, we're not really sure whether those players play. They could very well start. Uh, Statman, Dave, who's in your starting 11 to play Arsenal, mate? You see, I did have one starting 11 written out um, for United and it's the same sort of 11 that started last game. Mm. But... I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer may sort of switch a few things up. I think starting from the front, I think Sanchez is going to come in, uh, probably partner with Lukaku up front. I think United might go towards a sort of 4-4-2 diamond. That's what I could kind of see. So maybe throw in Fred in at number 10. But I think there'll still be some players that play in the sort of United first team um, and the FA Cup. Obviously, the last FA Cup game against Reading United were quite poor. Thought it was a bad performance. So I'm going to throw Fred in at around number 10 of 442 Diamond. I think Pogba stays. I think we'll throw Pogba in there, Herrera. And then maybe Andres Pereira at the tip of a diamond. Again, something that he did very well in pre season. And then a back four. I reckon we're going to go. Delo will retain his position at left back. Going to go Bay, Lindelof, Valencia, and Sergio Romero. I think it'll be a slightly tweaked team, but we'll still keep some core players in there. John, I saw your very excited finger wagging there when Dave said diamond. Uh, are you in agreement with Dave then? Well, you know what? I initially I, I was going through like I was going back and forth with this crap because I I've been so bad at this starting predicting eleven this season. I was just freaking awful. Um, I was. Gonna, I mean, I you're not that my... bad, mate. You've had eight appearances and you're on seven point seven. I've had four appearances and I'm on seven point two. Uh, look, before I, before I just before I start this eleven, I'm just gonna include this real quick snippet. Chris, producer, please, producer Chris, please don't cut this out. Please don't cut this out. Adam has been roasting me about this goddamn eleven thing <laughs> because. I started this thing when Jose Mourinho did not know what the hell he was doing in the beginning of the season, and we were just picking all your random crap. Yeah. All right, but anyways, anyways, my eleven. I'm gonna actually, I actually switched to a four-three-three. I think we're gonna keep um, that shape. I'm gonna go Romero at the back. I'm gonna go Luke Shaw, Lindelof, Bay, and Valencia as my back four, and I have a midfield three of Pogba, McTominay, and Fred. <laughs> and I think, and I think we're gonna rest uh, Rashford a little bit here. I'm gonna go Martial on the left with Mata on the right and Lukaku up front. Scott McTominay in the midfield to play Arsenal. Certainly interesting. All right then, Joel, as the Arsenal representative on this preview, what is your Arsenal eleven to play us? Um, well, I do believe they're going to switch it around a little bit. Um, I would rather, I know on my side, I'm a bit selfish. I would rather play the same team that played last week, but I believe they, they'll start checking goal because um, I think that, you know, he's, he's, you know, you just have to play him as the FA Cup. It's the least they can do. Um, I think, of course, Bellerin's injured, so they'll have Maitland-Niles uh, playing right back instead. Um, I think it's too risky to play Carl Jenkinson. I think Maitland-Niles will be the perfect fit for this. Uh, they'll play Socrates and Kashani as centre-backs because I don't think you want to change things too much in the diamond of, uh, in, sorry, in the heart of uh, like the, the centre-back positions. I think as a left-back, you'll probably see Monreal. Uh, he needs the game time. Uh, you probably want to keep Kalashniak uh, ready for the league. Um, they'll play Xhaka because we always play Xhaka. Uh, I can see Torreira and Guendouzi playing. And instead of Ramsey, I can actually see Ozil coming back and mad, you know, miraculously feeling better. I think up front, um, you will probably see Aubameyang and Lacazette just because you want to change the team, but you don't want to change the team too much. And um, I think it's a game that Lacazette would have played anyway, but I believe that with the changes of Ozil and, of course, like I was talking about, um, Maitland-Niles, 
we don't want to debalance the team too much. So that's my starting eleven. So a four three three, but we all know four three three isn't really four three three. It's more like four one two one two. So yeah. Ace, can you sort of summarise your season so far quickly for me? Twenty two unbeaten, mate. That's <laughs> that's that's the season. I think bef- after that it got a little bit a little bit you know dodgy. But to be honest with you, I, I don't it's blame the manager. Huh? Before that, you got scraped a few draws out there. You lot was pulling out. About 22 unbeaten, mate. We was out there beating the big team. Is this like that time you did the unbeaten season but lost six games? Oh, I'm so stark. I know. <laughs> Is this like that time? We didn't even think. Like, I'll be honest with you guys, full time Devils fans watching. We thought we were going to be 10th. Like Arsenal, like we really thought that it is over because there was always a Man United fan saying, you guys, are, you guys have got it coming. Trust me, you got it coming. So for us to go and, and win those games and not lose those games, it was a massive, massive achievement for us because we really didn't see it coming. And we're actually, we're actually playing good. If you look at our first game against Liverpool at the Emirates, if you're looking at even the Chelsea game that we had originally lost, great signs. So um, losing now or, or, or where we've been now, it, it, we don't blame the manager. We kind of look at it and we go... That's what happens, isn't it, when you ain't got money? Like, this, they won't let us have any money. But this like, is what I'm confused about, Joel, right? For years and years and years, Arsenal fans would say, we're sick of finishing fourth place every year with Wenger. He needs to go. And now you're, like, you're buzzing like, about a manager who's fighting tooth and nail to get fourth it's, place. It's different, because when you compare some of the players we had before, when you're getting fourth with Thierry Henry yeah, and Fabregas, that's different to getting fourth with Xhaka, isn't it? <laughs> like, it really is. So you've got to kind of look and say, OK, and especially when you've got Xhaka playing some sort of football, you've got to be able to look and go, you know what, this is actually decent. And that's the same with you guys, you know. Like, I'm sure it wouldn't be so bad if Oli Gunnar Solskjaer had you guys six or whatever, but you were looking like you're moving forward mm. instead of how the type of football that you guys were complaining about with, with Mourinho. I think it's the same situation. And on top of that, we have no money. In today's football, I don't care what anyone says, that's vital. Do you know what yeah. I mean? We can't even get loan players, for goodness sake. We're yeah. looking at Danny Suarez. I don't know anything about this guy, but I'm pretending I do because he's from Barcelona. Bro, we're, we're clutching onto straws at the moment. So da- Dave, be- da- da- Dave, is he any good? Statman Dave, is he any good? Yeah, I like him. He's a good player. He works hard. I think that's the biggest thing of why Unai Emery's looking at someone like him because not only is he technically proficient, good on the ball, but he works hard. Maybe not the Barcelona Champions League grade of player, but... He's a very good player. Like he'd fit into Arsenal really well. And Emery's a manager that likes players that work hard, do well in the transition. And that's what like, I like. Denis Suarez. He's a player that's yeah. always been around Europe and been like, where's he going to go? Because he eventually will fit in perfectly. Yeah. Someone like Arsenal. That, that, next that, time on another go. show, I'm going to repeat the exact words that you said. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, I just thought since you said I've not even got a clue who he is, I thought, well, there's one man here who definitely will. What do we all make of Arsenal this season so far? Uh, John Shin, let's start with you, mate. Um, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to watch a lot of other uh, oppositions play, but I did get I did get I did get a chance to watch the um, Chelsea versus Arsenal game, and I thought they were very well. Uh, they played very well. Uh, for the most part, Chelsea might have been, you know, handling the possession and trying to dominate with the ball, but off the ball, I thought Arsenal did very well, and I think uh, they really made a good meal of their chances. And Arsenal versus Manchester United is always one of those games. It's like irrespective of form, you never know which way it can go. Uh, so I just kind of want to be care- uh, We should be wary of the likes of Lacazette. I think he's. I think he's one of those players that can really threat. That we can th- that we can really cause a threat, uh, whichever the way it's going in, in terms of the flow of the game. I think uh, Lacazette has that ability to make chances happen uh, out of nowhere. Um, I don't know what's been happening with Ozil. I, I don't. I don't. I haven't been able to follow up around the, with the back news. Back problem. Back back problem. Oh well, great. I mean, if he's off, he's off, and if he's on, he's on. But uh, uh, they have quality. They have quality on that side. In that side, and uh, I'm going to be very, very uh, wary. And I think for Oleg on our Solskjaer's perspective, um, uh, it, it'll really, really be a big test in terms of uh, how he's going to be able to manage his squad. Is he going to be rotating, and is he going to be fielding a younger, sort of less experienced side against the strong Arsenal? We never know. But from an Arsenal perspective, I'm a little bit nervous because they do have the quality and they played very well against Chelsea uh, in terms of getting that result. So uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I really, I really think we need to really step up for this one. Statman, when you look at Arsenal, where do the biggest fears come from? I think the front two. Uh, Lacazette, Bemiang. There's a lot of pace in there, there's a lot of ability on the ball. I think the interesting side of Arsenal is that the systems that they played this season, there's been a number of systems. They played 4-2-3-1, 3-4-3, now this diamond that's popped up now. So 
for Manchester United to, you know, arguably unlock Arsenal going forward, I think the diamond again that we saw at Tottenham Hotspur would be good. You're thinking against uh, three at the back, you're pinning two of the, the, the centre halves back so they can't carry the ball out of defence. Thinking in the 4-4-2 diamond, we saw that at Spurs. Ollie's diamond was better than Poch's diamond. So I think it's going to be a game of diamonds and I expect Marcus Rashford again to get in behind the fullbacks if he's fit, if not Sanchez, if not Lukaku. So, you know, that's what I think. Cheeky sport, Dave. What have you made of Arsenal this season, mate? Well, what I've made from Statman's uh, Stat judgment there is that diamonds are forever. And uh, only a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, I think Arsenal have been really good this season, to be honest with you, in terms of expectation, in terms of what, they've, what they expected to, to be the case and what has actually come into fruition. Is they've, been, they've been really good. And we, the good thing about Oli is that he, he was there at a time where that was our main rival. So he wouldn't be second guessing this game. Mm. He wouldn't be taking this game for a chance. He, he would know what this game means to the fans, what this game means um, in terms of like the history and the rivalry of, of Manchester United versus Arsenal. And Arsenal once kicked us out of the uh, FA Cup a little while ago to stop our, our, our run of, um, of X amount of years without, you know, you know, without them beating us at Old Trafford. Um, but I think Arsenal's main threats for me, uh, it's Abam, Yang. I think he's just a top, 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 top quality striker. I think he's very dangerous. I think, um, he when he really when he really wants it when he really goes for it it's 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 tough to stop somebody like him he's technically astute he's in, he's an incredible footballer um, and he brings the best out of Lacazette I think mean, him coming in has really pushed Lacazette and made Lacazette want to want to you know put his stake in the ground um, so that's where I see the dangers um, coming from from Arsenal it's, it's definitely at the front at the front area and I think Obama Yang is, is is definitely key and central to to, um, to everything that's good that's going to be coming out of that game um, on Arsenal's side. But like I said, I think having Oli, who was there when Arsenal was our main threats, is, is, is such a great, great, great addition to have him in, in this game because I think he's going to be um, very, very technically astute with how we play and how we uh, break down this Arsenal side. OK, Dave, what's your score prediction? My what? Cheeky Sport Dave. Yeah, sorry, Cheeky Sport Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot I need to specify. <laughs> Um, I am going to go for a Millie Rock 3-1 still. Oh, I'd like that. <laughs> I'm going to go for a 3-1, a Manchester United 3-1, um, back at the Millie Rock Stadium, doing it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's happy I'm days, happy days. Uh, start man, what's your score prediction, mate? Yeah, I agree with that. 3-1 United. I think Alex <laughs> Sanchez is going to come back to Sting Arsenal at the, of course, the Millie Rock you Stadium. You reckon you're going to come to the Emirates and beat us 3-1? Hey, bro, that's what yeah, it's been done before. Me, <laughs> laugh, mate. This ain't Wenger days no more, mate. It's changed. Uh, go on then, Joel. Let's get your score prediction. It's got. It's going to be two on Arsenal. Ironically, I do think Jesse Lingard's going to score because he always does, <laughs> isn't it? But I do believe that with Aubameyang and Lacazette, we'll probably get the others, and you'll probably, if Özil plays, you'll all of a sudden have an amazing game and. That's yeah, what's going to be the difference. The Millie Rock celebration doesn't really have the same effect if you score in a game that your team actually loses, though. John, what's your score yeah. prediction, mate? I'm going to go 3 2 to United. 3 2 United. Right. You've all gone for quite big score lines, so I think I'm going to go for 1 0 United. I think we'll go over there and just sneak it. Nice one for joining us on today's preview. You can check out Dave and Joel over on Cheeky Sport. It's a great channel, one of my favourite football channels on YouTube, so go and check that out. John Shin's on YouTube too. Uh, John, are you the biggest John Shin on YouTube yet? No. We need to <laughs> make that happen. happen. We no. need to make him the biggest John Shin on YouTube. So go and subscribe to him, please. Statman Dave, loads of real uh, knowledgeable and interesting videos on his channel as well about football and the more intricate tactics of it. Links below. Uh, and as for us, we'll have loads of videos coming this weekend after the game at the Emirates and uh, get in the comments below and give your opinions on anything that the guys have spoken about today. We'll be back next time. See you later, guys. In a bit.